Hi there, everybody. Welcome back. Oh, what do we have here? I guess it's time for another Top 10 Tales Fact video from your favorite channel, TheBrotherHeartOfGaming.com. I'm your host, William Morris. And I am your co-host, Eugene Morris. For the 11th entry in the Tales of Mothership titles, we're going back to the handheld, the Tales of Hearts. Released exclusively for the Nintendo DS and worldwide for the PlayStation Vita, Tales of Hearts has a pretty unique history. So, let's dive in. We are the Brotherhood of Gaming.com, and these are the 10 facts assorted in no particular order for Tales of Hearts. Number 10. It was the first portable title to be developed by Namco Tales Studio. Development of this game began in 2006 while work was being completed on the PlayStation 2 version of Tales of Destiny Director's Cut. Tales of Hearts was headed by Hideo Baba, which would become his first original Tales game that he would produce. The remake of Tales of Destiny would end up having quite a bit of influence on this game, as many of Destiny's assets were used here. The development team for this game contained members from Team Symphonia and Team Destiny. The most interesting note about this is that despite Tales of the Tempest and Tales of Innocence coming out before it, this would actually be the first portable game constructed in-house by Namco Tales Studio, as Tempest was developed by Dimps and Innocence was developed by Alpha System. This would turn out to be an unusual experience for the studio, as they were used to working on console games. According to the director of the game, it was very difficult for them to create an interface, and to fit the content on a pretty much limited hardware. This forced them to use a great deal of trial and error in the programming process. Number 9. The Nintendo DS Edition had two versions. Tales of Hearts was initially released for public enjoyment on December 18, 2008 just in time for Christmas. Upon its release, players in Japan had the option of purchasing one of two editions, an anime movie edition or a CG movie edition. The anime edition possessed cutscenes that were produced by series standard, good old production IG. The CG movie edition was worked on by a three-person team, Shiragumi Limited, which would create 3D cutscenes for the game. The team worked hard to make sure that the 3D cutscenes would fit in properly with the game and would do justice to Matsumi Inomata's original character designs. The question is, why do this? Well, simply put, they just wanted to try something new by selling two different versions. So Tales of Hearts became the first Tales game to contain CGI cutscenes. And it would be the last, as the CG version of the game went over like a fart in church with the fans. So when the reimagining came out, unsurprisingly, the CGI was not used again. Shit. Number 8. The game was released on the same day as Dissidia Final Fantasy. Now even though we are hardcore Tales fans through and through, even we have to acknowledge that when it comes to the JRPG series, or RPG scene in general, Final Fantasy is still unarguably the top dog. For the most part, the Tales series has always been looking up to them. Not to say that there is an official rivalry between the two franchises or anything like that. I mean, we're not talking like this is the JRPG version of Bloods and the Crips. But the truth is, Namco's Tales series just does not enjoy the mainstream success as Square Enix's most popular series. When Tales of Hearts was released, Namco made the decision to release it in Japan on the same day as the much-anticipated Final Fantasy fighting game Dissidia Final Fantasy. Namco put as much effort as they could to promote it, such as featuring it in several events and offering several pre-order bonuses. But in the end, Final Fantasy remained king, as in the first two weeks of its release, Dissidia Final Fantasy sold 489,000 copies. Tales of Hearts, the anime version, moved 124,000 in the same time frame. I guess it is true what they say, you don't go tugging on Superman's cape. Number 7. The music for the game received mixed reviews. The man himself, Matoi Sakuraba, would once again compose another Tales soundtrack here with Tales of Hearts. But he was not alone, as he did get help from Hiroshi Tamura and Shinji Tamura. The game's original soundtrack was published by BMG Japan and appeared on a two compact disc compilation. It was released the same month as the game itself. Not only that, but a special disc with selected tracks were released alongside the CG movie edition. To many critics, however, it was a mixed bag. 
To many of them, the tracks felt very old school and reminiscent of tracks from Fantasia and Destiny. They did not match the more dynamic sounds from Abyss and Vesperia. But many critics still considered it the best soundtrack from the handheld market, compared to other Tales games, meaning it was better than Tempest and Innocence. But it was still judged to be weaker than the ones that appear on its console brethren. Number 6. It received a reimagining on the PlayStation Vita. In March of 2013, Tales of Hearts was reimagined or remade on the PlayStation Vita. Hey, remember that system that nobody owned? <laughs> I mean, for a long time, we couldn't even play or review this game because we didn't have a Vita. Nobody did. Yeah, it's true. And people who actually thought they saw a Vita once were actually looking at just another PSP. Handling the development primarily for this version was Seventh Chord, the Japanese developer that was also behind Tales of Innocence R. Eh, makes sense, because this company mostly worked on handheld titles. Seemed like a good trade-off. Similar to Innocence R, Tales of Hearts R was a full remake of the original game, complete with full voice acting, new characters, 3D graphics, and anime cutscenes provided by production IG. This game was also developed alongside Innocence R, so there was a lot of crossover between the staff for these projects. Replacing Hideo Baba as the head producer for this game was Mika Murakita, who had previously worked on Tales of Legendia's audio and design. There was also a special edition called Tales of Hearts R Link Edition, released for the Vita which had collectible items included as extra DLC codes. Originally, there was no plan for a western release. But that changed due to Namco's heavy promotion in those territories. This led to multiple requests from those fan bases. So, Tales of Hearts R would be released outside of Japan in November of 2014. While there was no English voice acting, just subtitles, American and European audiences still got the chance to experience this Tales Adventure 2. Number 5. The game features numerous cameo appearances. Cameos in Tales games are nothing new. But here for Tales of Hearts, they kicked it up a notch. In this game, you as the player can call characters from other Tales and Namco games to assist you in battle for a single attack. When you acquire their personal items, usually by completing a side quest, you can then summon them. They can also be bought in the Grade Shop after completing the game. Some examples of Tales characters included are Stan, who does a Demon Fang, Sentinel Coolidge, who does a Ground Slam, and the greatest Tales hero of them all, Reed Herschel, with his Aurora Wall. But like mentioned before, the guest spots go beyond the Tales series, as other faces include Hihachi Mishima from Tekken, Cosmos from Xenosaga, and Gilgamesh from the Tower of Druaga. From base arts to elemental arts, these cameos do add some more flavor to the battle. Unfortunately, you can only acquire them in the original game, as this element did not cross over into Hearts R. Number 4. Both Tales of Hearts and Hearts R had its own take on the LMBS. Tales of Hearts for the Nintendo DS used the combination aerial linear motion battle system, and in some ways this was very similar to the combat system from Tales of the Tempest and Innocence. Players can control three party members, but can also control non-selected characters in battle as well. TP, or magic power, was replaced with an emotional gauge, or EG, which is an evolved form of the CC system first introduced in Tales of Destiny. This can let the player create any chain of attacks, spells, and or arts until the gauge is completely empty. In Tales of Hearts R, the system was changed up, as here, there are four party members that can be used in battle, while the emotional gauge is replaced with a standard TP and TC system. Guard counters from Tales of Innocence R are reused in this game as well, where by guarding just right at the exact moment can allow you to immediately counter the attack. Hearts R also possesses chase links. In this mode, the attacking characters is given a limited amount of time to attack an enemy without fear or repercussion. These features give both sets of Tales of Hearts its own special feeling. Number 3. Character names are references to minerals. The setting of this game began with a conflict between the worlds of Organica and Mineria. A little on the nose there, as minerals would be a big part of the game's story. For example, the Minerians sent monsters to eat the citizens of Organica's crystalline essence of their hearts and emotions. Just go with it. In keeping with the traditions of other Tales games, which is using a common theme through its characters, the majority of the cast of Tales of Hearts had their names derived from geology, such as from items like rocks, gemstones, and ores. 
The game's main heroine, Kohaku Hearts, had her name taken from the Japanese word for amber. Her brother Hisui got his name inspired by the Japanese word for jade, and so on and so forth. One exception is the game's main hero, Core Meteor. While his name is not taken directly from any native earth mineral, it is taken from a meteor, which is a large solid object in space. This is kind of similar to how many characters from Legendia are named after artists, or how astronomy was a main theme for the setting of Tales of Eternia. Yes, we knew his name was originally Shing Meteorite. They changed it here and yet yeah, bugged the shit out of us too. Number two, Dean returned to perform the theme song. Popular Japanese J-pop group Dean is no stranger to the Tales of series. Back in 1997, they teamed up with Namco in the development of the theme song for Tales of Destiny, Like a Dream. Well, for Tales of Hearts, they were called upon once again. Here, they made the main theme song called Eternal Tomorrow. The song was a solid hit as it reached number six on the Oricon charts and would remain on the charts for eight weeks. We would play you a sample, but <laughs> we won't because... Reason being is, it gets quite annoying having our Tales videos struck down by copyright claims. Yeah, we have some experience with that, unfortunately. A lot, actually. This song, still, would be the 34th single released by the group. Originally formed in 1992, the group would go on to sell 15 million CDs since then. With their recently released album, New Journey, the group is still going strong after all these years. Way to go, guys. And number one, it received strong sales and reviews in Japan. Tales of Hearts, like most Tales games, launched with a great deal of expectations, and they were met for the most part. After its first week of release, the Nintendo DS title had sold 137,000 copies, with 122,000 of them being the anime edition, because again, the CGI movie one was a bad idea. Later on, the PS Vita version would reach up to 75,049 during its first year of release, becoming one of Japan's 50 top-selling games for that year. To many critics and gamers, this was a true Tales game at its core. For many who played it, Tales of Hearts was just plain fun. The original DS games were awarded the Editor's Choice Edition from RPG Fan, who generally praised both the graphics and the game's presentation. Tales of Hearts R would also receive good praise as well from the critics that reviewed it, mainly toward the gameplay itself. Tales of Hearts continued the rich tradition for the Tales of series, and to many, it is the best example of the series in the handheld market. Hearts would be something that both veterans and newbies to the series could enjoy. And that's our list! Make sure to like and leave a comment down below, or you'll make Bruiser sad. If you don't want to make Bruiser sad, look at this face. That's right, Jane. Also, before you go, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button at the bottom just so that when we release a new video or anything new, you'll be first to know about it and you'll be able to watch it and comment and do all of those wonderful things that you love so much. And also, before you go, please, you can check out our official website where we have merchandise with the Brother Gaming logos on it, such as mugs, t-shirts, pantyhose, things of that nature. It's really cool stuff. Check it out. And last but not least, we definitely got to start promoting our Patreon. Yeah, it's back up and running. Again, it's something that's completely optional. You don't have to do it. But if you want to support the Brotherhood of Gaming financially, you can. It's as easy as just $1 a month. Hey, we're not picky. Or you can subscribe and continue to share our videos with your friends, your neighbors, your families, your girlfriends, your husbands. Hey, equal opportunity. And we will see you next time, guys. All right, later. Hey there everyone, did you like this video? If you did, why not give us a thumbs up and maybe leave a comment and watch some more of our stuff. Also, if you really want to keep up with the Brotherhood of Gaming such as myself, William Morris, or Eugene, you should really follow us on our Twitters, links provided below, so you can see what's coming up in the future. And since, you know, we have to play these games sometimes and record them, why not join us on our Twitch page where you can hang out with all of us as we do so and chit chat about the games that we love so much. Lastly, if you want to help keep our dreams alive, you can support us any number of ways, either by continuing to view our videos, like them, share them with all your friends and family and your peeps and your girlfriends, or you can also join our small Patreon and throw all your spare cash away. We'll even give you a shout out. Once again, thank you all and have a wonderful day.